Welcome back to another lesson. In this lesson, I'd like to show you a chord progression with, with a very gospel-like feel. So it's going to be a very practical lesson. I'm going to show you an actual progression. I'm going to talk about the voicing uh, and then about the principles a bit, bit behind the progression itself. So how do you get this gospel-like sound? Let me start by playing the progression itself and then we'll break it down. So let me start by walking you through the chords and then we'll say a few words about how I chose them and what were the guiding principles and, and what gives this a gospel kind of feel. So this progression is in the key of F major and the first chord is this. So what is this? This is an F really, but uh, Let's try to break it down and see what I'm playing. So I'm playing an A for the bass in the right hand, and everything is a double bass here, pretty much. Uh, sorry, in the left hand. In the right hand, I'm playing A, C, E flat, F, and A flat. So if I take off the A flat, I just have an F dominant 7 here over a bass of A. What's with this A flat? Well, if you look at. Uh, an F9 chord, this could be a sharp 9, so it has some dissonance in it, which gives it a very unique and interesting flavor. And if you'll notice, if you actually uh, think about what the, say, uh, pentatonic scale or the blue scale on D is, it's this. And really what I'm playing with the progression is So I'm kind of playing on the pentatonics or the blue scale in D. Let's go over to the next chord. Uh, after this, after this F chord, I go to a B flat chord. So I have a B flat in for the bass in the right hand, sorry, in the left hand. And in the right hand, I'm playing G, B flat, D, F, and G. Really this is an, uh, a G minor 7th uh, over a bass of B flat. So it has this ambiguity. I'm playing the second minor chord of the scale, but I'm using the bass of the fourth chord. Uh, and these two chords, B flat and G minor 7th, really share a lot uh, between, between them in terms of notes. The next chord is a G dominant 7, so I'm playing a B flat and in the left hand. And in the right hand, I'm holding down two keys here, F and G with the thumb, and then B, D, and F. For the last chord, I play either a, well, I'm playing a B flat over a bass of C, uh, it's a C in the left hand, and in the right hand it's an F, B flat, uh, D and F. You can omit the F, by the way, you can just play the B flat here. And then to the tonic. So it's an F major chord, it's bass of F, and then F, A, C and F in the right hand. This is repeated a second time, you can repeat it or not, it's up to you. In the third uh, repetition, the ending is a bit different. So it starts out the same, but for the third chord, instead of going I, to the G dominant seventh, I skip it and I go directly to the B flat over C, 
And then there are some new chords. So let me break those down for you. So here I'm playing a bass of D flat and in the right hand it's a G, B flat, uh, D flat and F. So this is a basically a G, uh, you can think of it in, in, in several different ways. This could be a G minor 7 flat 5, probably the easiest way. And this leads to a D minor 7. I'm playing a D in the left hand and an F, C and F in the right hand. The next chord is a G dominant 7. And you have two variations here you can choose from really. You can either take this C and play a B flat and in the left hand play a G for a bass. So F, B, F in the right hand. Or you could keep this C here. It's not really a G dominant 7, this adds some tension, but I find this tension to be interesting and, and you might want to keep it in your playing. And this leads again to a B flat over a bass of C and resolve to the tonic. So that's the progression. We basically broken it down. Now let's say a few words about exactly what makes this kind of a gospel-like thing and, and why this progression, in, in my opinion, works. Okay, so why it, in my opinion at least, sounds good. So there are a few things. First of all, if you'll notice, like I said, what I'm really doing is I'm playing a phrase uh, in or over the blue scale that's associated with the F uh, scale. So there are two blues scales that you can improvise over. One of them is the F blues scale. And one of them is built on a D, a scale that is three semitones down. And I'm playing over the one and D. And Really, if I just break it down to the melody notes and the bass, here's what I'm playing in this progression. And really everything else works around this. So the fact that we're kind of playing over the blues scale here, in a sense, is first of all what really gives this the blues-like gospel feel. What else do we have here? Well, if you've noticed, then throughout large portions of the progression, the bass in the left hand really moves in small steps. It kind of goes up, while the chords in the right hand go down. Here, take a look, just play the melody and the bass. Sorry. So you see? Going down, going up. And this opposing motion is actually very common in gospel. And you should kind of try and have it as much as possible in your own playing. You know, there are other variations like... where you go down in the right hand and up in the left hand. It's a very effective uh, tool. Uh, what else kind of works in this uh, thing and, and makes it a gospel or a blues-like feel? Uh, there was this dissonance. So this dissonance actually that we played in the first chord really gives you, as you start out, you're already creating some blues-like dissonance, which again really serves to give your entire progression a gospel-like feel. And there is one more thing that makes this sound gospel-like, 
And that's the fact that you're using really large block chords in your right hand. So you know, all of the chords are kind of like big. You know, I'm moving, you know, I'm, I'm utilizing all fingers to play these very dense, kind of packed chords. Uh, and this big sound is again a very defining feature or characteristic of gospel piano. So these are the four things that you should pay attention to when playing this progression. And you don't have to play it as is, like in a boring, slow way. You can add rhythm to it maybe. So you could play maybe something like this. That's it. Uh, I hope you've learned something interesting and I'll see you next time.